hello everybody. Um, okay, so this is the plan. Um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be making. It's going to be quite a few, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, a series of videos. Uh, uh, sort of counting down, I guess five favorite albums from each of the artists that I sort of seriously collect. Um, I've arranged the albums in backwards chronological order, going from the 20 teens all the way back to the 60s. I think basically what you're going to find is it's gonna, we're going to pretty much fly through the 2000 teens and the 2000s and the 90s. It's going to slow down a bit, quite a bit actually, in the 80s and then it's going to absolutely crawl in the 70s. Uh, and uh, and then it's speed will pick up a little bit in the 60s. Um, but it's basically going to be five albums per video. So, let's go. All right. So here's the first one. It's Radiohead, a moon-shaped pool. Uh, released May 8th, 2016. Reached number three on the American chart, album chart. And, uh, great artwork as usual from them um, although I was kind of ticked off that I didn't get printed lyrics I know that that special edition version has printed lyrics and stuff in them and well, the regular version doesn't um, You know, the, the fact of the matter is, I've actually been kind of doing this list for a few years now. And back when this album first came out in 2016, when I first heard it, I knew it was going to be on the list. I knew it was, it was going to knock one of my other top fives out, which just happened to be uh, Hail to the Thief. Um, but... I, I've actually, to be honest with you, I've only listened to it a few times because in the meantime I've been getting into a lot of other bands and getting really serious about all these other bands and I've not really given it as much attention as it deserves. Um, I just know that when I heard it, I really liked it and I really, really like it every time I hear it, each of the times that I've heard it. So don't know if I can really say why I like it so much because I I need to kind of listen to it again so I'm probably as I go through the songs I'm probably gonna uh, listen to them again at, while I'm making this video I'm trying to trying to kind of piece it together one thing I do know about this album is that I really like uh, Johnny Greenwood's orchestrations which uh, have been given a lot more prominence on this album than I think they have in the past. Uh, his work as a film composer is probably really kind of coming to bear uh, quite a bit on this album. First song is uh, Burn the Witch. Uh, it's a really, really good song. Um, it's got these really, really cool kind of, really kind of percussive kind of scraping strings on it, string section. Um, and uh, the lyrics, I'm, I'm looking at the lyrics here on 
on the internet. Because <laughs> they didn't put them in the record. Damn it. Anyway, um, and uh, I guess it's kind of it's got this kind of kind of witch hunt, witch trial kind of thing going. But um, this is a low flying panic attack. Sing the song of sixpence that goes, burn the witch, burn the witch. We know where you live. Of course, the video is really great too. It's uh, it's a cross between a British children's uh, television program uh, that used stop motion animation and the equally British uh, horror classic The Wicker Man uh, kind of an odd combination that uh, it's a, a little on the disturbing side it's, but it's a, it's a really cool video the next song is Daydreaming, which I think is probably one of the more beautiful songs that Radiohead's done. Uh, this is really nice, kind of kind of delicate piano motif running through it, um, and then it kind of starts to build towards the end. It's one of their longer songs, one of only a handful of songs I think they have that go over six minutes. Um, but it starts to kind of building towards the end and then it gets to this fairly intense uh, string section near the end that's actually I think running backwards uh, and uh, and then it concludes with Tom York running backwards <laughs> has anybody been able to figure out what he's saying? I'm not really sure what the lyrics mean but there is a passage that's kind of that kind of jumps out at me. That uh, I, just, I guess I just kind of like the imagery in it. The white room by a window where the sun comes through. So, um, for this song, directed by uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, who uh, is of course a very well-known and respected filmmaker, uh, did uh, There Will Be Blood, which is an awesome movie. Boogie Nights, another awesome movie. Uh, I think those are the only two films of his I've seen, but he's done lots of other movies that are apparently also very, very good. But, um, so then we switch to side two after only about ten minutes. Uh, and the next song is Dex Dark. By the way, the songs are actually arranged on the album in alphabetical order. They, they just, they... They sequenced them that way just for the heck of it, and it turned out it they liked the sequence, so they kept it that way. One thing I really like about this album is there's a lot of really kind of sublime kind of turns in the melodies, and this song is a pretty good example of that. See, and what I'm getting out of the lyrics, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, sometimes, it, I mean, Tom York's lyrics can be a bit hard to get, kind of, to get at, but, I mean, they're, they're, what I'm getting is some kind of, it, like, in an enveloping darkness, which is pretty common, I think, in, in his lyrics, but anyways, uh, and in your life there comes the darkness, this spacecraft blocking out the sky, and there's nowhere to hide, you run to the back and you cover your ears, but it's the loudest sound you've ever heard. Now we're trapped, we're dark clouds people, we are helpless to resist in your darkest hour. Next song on the album is uh, Desert Island Disc, with some uh, really nice, kind of gently persistent acoustic guitar on it. Um, the lyrics are a lot more positive than, than I think you normally get from Tom York. Um, the wind rushing round my open heart, an open ravine in my spirit white, totally alive in my spirit light. Which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But now you want to talk about persistence. The next song, Full Stop, is pretty relentless, actually. It uh, kind of slowly builds and builds and builds over several minutes, and it kind of drops off after about four and a half minutes, and then it starts building and building again. And 
very sort of persistent, insistent rhythm running through it. This is a foul tasting medicine, a foul tasting medicine to be trapped in your full stop. Tooth will mess you up. So we start off side three with glass eyes, with uh, uh, Johnny Greenwood's orchestrations really kind of taking center stage on this, and there's also some uh, really nice sounding, uh, uh, sort of electronically processed piano on it. Path trail. What happened to my hair? Anyway. The path trails off and heads down a mountain through the dry bush. I don't know where it leads. And the next one is Identikit. It's another one with a really sublime kind of melodic element to it. Um, and the, the vocal in the kind of the middle section, there's a group vocal in the middle section that I really like. Uh, and some really good guitar playing at the end also. Sweet-faced ones with nothing left inside that we all can love, that we all can love. This track is The Numbers. So, really good lyrics on this one. Uh, so we call upon the people. People have this power. The numbers don't decide. Your system is a lie. The river running dry. The wings of a butterfly. And you may pour us away like soup, like we're pretty broken flowers. We'll take back what is ours. Take back what is ours. One day at a time. Uh, and... Uh, again, the, the string arrangements on this are just just off the charts. Uh, I think I'm going to play a clip of the song. So now we go to side four. The first song is Present Tense. Uh, this dance, it's like a weapon of self-defense against the present tense. Kind of a slightly condensed version of the lyrics of the first uh, verse. I don't really know what know what to say about this song other than this. It's a really good song. It's got a, kind of a 
cool kind of samba beat to it. Uh, and then the next song is Tinker Tailor Soldier Sailor Rich Man Poor Man Beggar Man Thief. It's uh, kind of a, a well actually it's a very interesting mixture of uh, kind of the more kind of electronic elements that you would have heard on some of their earlier albums like Kid A and Amnesiac or their previous album King of Limbs uh, and and uh, a combination of that and and some more of those awesome uh, string arrangements which really kind of in fact probably I think probably about the whole last third of it is pretty much just that just a combination of those two things mainly and I think it's, and, it, and it's all instrumental by that point it's just and it's just that and it sounds really cool all the holes at once are coming alive set free out of sight and out of mind lonely and they pray the ones you light your fires to keep away crawling out upon expending and all you have to do is say yeah yeah it's such a beautiful song um, and this song of course has been around for a long time actually um, I'm not sure exactly how far back it goes, but I know that uh, uh, it was recorded live and issued on their live album, I Might Be Wrong, uh, back in what, I don't know, 2001, 2002, something like that. Um, it's just a great song, great, great lyrics. I'll drown my beliefs to have you be in peace. I'll dress like your niece and wash your swollen feet. Just don't leave, don't leave. I'm not living, I'm just killing time. Your tiny hands, your crazy kitten smile. Just don't leave, don't leave. And true love waits in haunted attics. And true love lives on lollipops and crisps. Just don't leave, don't leave. It's a great way to end the album. Next up, it's David Bowie, Black Star, released January 8th, 2016, his first number one album. This was actually the first Bowie album I have ever bought <laughs> um, I was a little bit late getting into Bowie and uh, I guess it took him dying for me to finally come around and start really seriously looking into his work this is an awesome album cover I love what he did with this it's so cool a million in hot springs. <laughs> so I got that in books a million too. Um, oh this black on black kind of thing is really neat. This is Bowie's final album, uh, and I can't think of a better album to go out on than this. <laughs> I mean, 
really seriously you know and of course he was battling cancer while he wrote and recorded it you know and he, he clearly listening to the to to these songs and to the words it's it's very clear that he knew that he could that this could very well be his last album and and that he could that uh, mortality is definitely a subject that's on the table in this on this album and while it is a it, it's it's a dark album in places it's also fairly um, I would say fairly uplifting in places especially towards the end of the album you know the first song is uh, the title track Black Star which is an amazing song um, it's about 10 minutes long I don't really know um, I don't really I, I can't the lyrics are pretty hard to I don't know, pretty hard to make out. I don't really know exactly what's going on there, but although I've heard a lot of people saying that there's a lot of kind of esoteric kind of references in there. Um, it's a really cool music video that goes with it, um, which definitely does seem to have some references to Bowie's past. You know, there's a uh, uh, a skeleton in an astronaut suit with a jewel encrusted skull you know that I, I guess probably is supposed to make one think of uh, Major Tom you know <laughs> the kind of way it kind of shifts gears right in the middle is really kind of somber for the first uh, third to half of it and then it kind of has a kind of a change in the middle of it that I really like. Um, I'm way up on money. I've got game. I see right so wide, so open hearted pain. I want eagles in my daydreams, diamonds in my eyes. I'm a black star. I'm a black star. It's Tis a Pity She Was a Whore. Uh, title is actually, actually comes from the title of a play from back in Shakespeare's time uh, by Christopher Marlowe called Tis Pity She's a Whore. Um, uh, really interesting lyrics on this one. <laughs> See, Man, she punched me like a dude. Hold your mad hands, I cried. Tis a pity she was a whore. Tis my curse, I suppose. That was patrol. That was patrol. This is the war. That's actually all the lyrics that were printed on this song. There are actually more. There's actually another verse, but uh, interestingly, it was they chose not to. Uh, he chose not to publish that verse. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a, it's a really cool song though. And then, then we get to Lazarus. Uh, in addition to doing. Uh, doing the chart positions for all the albums. I'm also doing the chart positions for any singles that made the Billboard Top 40, and this one did. It reached number 40. Um, it was his first Top 40 single since the 80s, actually. And for very good reason. Um, another great video for this one. This is it's one of those songs where now, I mean, I don't know what to say other than just quote the lyrics. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of in the lyrics, really. You know, um, this way or no way, you know I'll be free, just like that bluebird. Now ain't that just like me? Oh, I'll be free, just like that bluebird. Oh, I'll be free, ain't that just like me? And, uh, and then then we go to side two. The first song is Sue or In the Season of Crime. It's a really interesting song. Lyrics uh, seem to be about a man who murders a woman who was, apparently he was in a relationship, but I guess she, she he discovered she was with another man. Instead of him recounting what happened, 
in chronology is it's all kind of fragmented you know like probably kind of uh, you know like the state of his mind at the time is fragmented and so it's kind of coming through all sort of fragmented you know you know this thing and then that thing that happened earlier and then this thing that happened later and see, I kissed your face Sue I pushed you down beneath the weeds endless faith in hopeless deeds I kissed your face I touched your face Sue goodbye and uh, this song actually uh, there's a different version of it that he recorded and released a couple of years earlier on the the best of album nothing has changed and there's a there's a really nice video for that also um, then the next song is girl loves me which uh, was definitely inspired by a clockwork orange probably more the book than the movie but based on the the sort of slang that the characters use in that book called nadsat um, and it's uh, it's kind of it just kind of permeates the song. Um, Gina, so sound, so titty up this mouth, check say, party up mooge, Nanty Vela set round on Tuesday, real bad dizzy snatch, making all the omies mad Thursday, popo blind to the poly in the hole by Friday, where the f did Monday go? That's the main <laughs> line in the song. It's repeated many many times, and it is the reason why this album has a parental advisory sticker on it. <laughs> But then, then we get to my favorite part of the album. Uh, my two favorite songs, really. Um, first is Dollar Days. Um, I mean, I mean, again, it's just, I don't know, the lyrics are just, just some really beautiful lyrics. Of, I'm falling down, it's nothing to me, it's nothing to see. If I never see the English evergreens I'm running to, it's nothing to me, it's nothing to see. I'm dying to push their backs against the grain and fool them all again and again. I'm trying to. It's all gone wrong, but on and on. The bitter nerve ends never end. I'm falling down. Don't believe for just one second I'm forgetting you. I'm trying to. I'm dying to. Um, and then the last song is... Uh, I can't give everything away. This is probably my favorite song on here. Um, um, I'm just I'm just gonna read lyrics and I'm gonna play a clip from it. Um, uh, really, this is pretty much the whole set of lyrics, minus all the repetitions. I know something's very wrong. The pulse returns. The prodigal sons. The blackout hearts. The flowered news with skull designs upon my shoes. I can't give everything away. Seeing more and feeling less, saying no but meaning yes. This is all I ever meant. That's the message that I sent. I can't give everything away. Now I'm just going to play some of it because it's just it's just an awesome song. And it's just a great way to end his final album. I mean, it's, it's amazing really. Um, you know, considering everything he was going through. How just really kind of up, just kind of... It's kind of a cheesy word, I know, but kind of uplifting the ending of this song and the album is, and so that's the part I'm going to play right now.
Um, I learned a pretty bad lesson. That, uh, my actually, my first copy was the my first LP copy was when I bought it. Uh, books a million. I think I got this at Books a Million too, but um, this was the first copy. And uh, my room gets pretty hot even when the air conditioner is on. And I guess I left it sitting out. Uh, not sitting out, it was in the album cover. I mean, it was inside here, but. If you can see that or not, but uh, that's, that warp is bad enough that uh, that the needle jumps off the record every time it hits it. Don't leave your records out, and don't think that because your record is 180 grams that it's not going to warp. Because it will. So up next, it's Ivor Slur. It's the name of the album. It's released uh, October sixteenth, two thousand fifteen. This artist, this is the first music artist that I've gotten into who didn't record a single album in the previous millennium. Uh, I've taken a pretty big interest in a place called the Faroe Islands. Um, <clears throat> and she's from there. It's kind of between like Scotland and Iceland up in the North Atlantic. It's an amazing looking place. And, uh, and I watched, there were some travel vlogs and stuff and they used some of her music in them. And I first started really getting into her music about six months ago, although only it's only been just here, uh, here in the last couple of weeks since Christmas that I've actually been able to buy any of her stuff. Um, in fact, this one just arrived today in the mail. Um, ordered this off of a third-party seller on Amazon and now I've seen the CD version of this and it's got printed lyrics and stuff and some other artwork in it and I, I wasn't expecting to get all of the CD artwork but I was kind of expecting to get the printed lyrics and it doesn't have them I'm kind of a little bit disappointed about that but still it's pretty cool artwork I like the artwork on it a lot posted the the CD booklet on Discog, so here's what the CD booklet actually looks like. By the time she recorded this album in 2015, she'd been pretty much mostly recording in English, but um, this album is actually in Faroese. Although she did, a couple of years later, put out an English language version of it, I really kind of prefer this version, I prefer the Faroese version. You know, her music really always kind of invokes the, sort of the landscape and the the feel, the weather and everything of the Faroe Islands, the high cliffs and the crashing waves and fog and and really kind of dramatic nature of of those islands. If you if you get a chance, definitely go go uh, either watch some videos on YouTube or or do what I do and go to uh, like uh, Google. Google Maps, Google, Google Street View, and pop that little yellow man down on one of those highways and just do a 360 view and just hit that forward button. 
I mean, it's an amazing place. And um, but now she'd been getting more and more into kind of electronic sounds, and up till this album, they'd been kind of more used for kind of flavor, kind of color. But this one, the electronics really kind of dominate the album, and yet somehow this album invokes that feeling of you know, that, that that whole thing with, about the Faroe Islands it seems to me not having been there of course more than any other album she's done I think I think what I'm mostly going to do with this album I think the best thing really is just really just kind of read read off some of the the English translations of the lyrics uh, now, when she did the English language version of this, she didn't actually do a straight translation of the English language, the English of the Faroese lyrics. She actually gave the lyrics to uh, a couple of friends of hers who wrote poetry, and uh, let them and let them uh, do their kind of their own interpretations of the lyrics. But what I'm reading here is uh, straight translations of, of her original lyrics. So the first song is called Silvitni. Um, I'm probably not getting the pronunciations right, <laughs> but uh, the title translates to Dead Calm. Um, in moonlight I see coral reefs glittering through the dead calm in your eyes. I willingly sink into the deep. I am drawn to the beauty in you. I let go of all my troubles. I forget my restlessness. Nothing can pull me away from you. No one can love me like you do. The next song is Broten, uh, which translates to Broken. Um, some really nice acoustic guitar by Ivor on this. Um, I mean, there is, it does have that kind of electronic feel, but it's mixed with this really great kind of acoustic guitar, kind of rhythmic acoustic guitar element. Um, um, see, you are broken, split into two, your wings are cut, can't find purpose in anything. You feel trapped, bound in shackles. How do you unbind this knot in your soul? How do you break out between the narrow bars into an open world that can hold you? Dancing wildly in the black night, don't know the morning yet, our broken hearts take one step at a time. And the next song is called Salt, a word which is the same in Faroese and English. Um, this song, I think, was done, was actually written for another project that she was working on at the same time with the Danish radio big band and a, and a, and a chorale, and there's like several different people involved in it called The Heart of a Selkie, which is based, I think it's based on a, there's a, 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 le, a Faroese legend about these, these seals that come ashore like one night out of the year and they shed their skins and become women for a night and some fisherman kidnaps one and, and, uh, puts her seal skin in a trunk and locks it up and hides the key, keeps the key with him wherever he goes and gets married to her, marries her and they have kids and um, I don't know, but anyway, I think that uh, the lyrics for this project were actually not written by her, they were written by someone else, but they're, but, uh, uh, but anyway, this is, um, th there's, these are some of the lyrics. Um, the salt in my body, the ocean inside of me, an intoxicating tide, a current of aching. And the sea grows heavy, every pull is abyss bound. I know that I must leave, I know that I can. In subskin chasms surges my longing, uproots time, erodes my dread. I'm gonna play I'm gonna play a bit of this one.
Yoshika Flokar. Uh, the title translates to Fog Banks. This is this is really one of the one of the more beautiful songs on there. I, I really love the the melody and and the arrangement and you know and I'm not really big on electronic. I'm not really but but I I just love the way the way it's handled on this album. Um, fog banks are lying like a fluffy duvet over the village. You stand by the window and gaze out toward the foggy dale. Gray out over gray, hidden is everything that was green and blue. The high mountains are cocooned in high fog. Your eyes are distant as though they see something no one else sees. I had wished I could see through your eyes your reality. Fury Petty, uh, which translates to piece by piece. Uh, and this one is actually, I don't think there's any electronics on this one. It's much more acoustic flavored with some really nice uh, male backing vocals from one of, from I think the drummer actually on there. Um, it's much more in line with what she'd kind of been doing before. Her last album was much more acoustic and this is kind of more in that line. Uh, when you are near, I am naked. I don't have my scars covered. You glue me together piece by piece until nothing is left broken. When you are near, I have one face and the mask I wore falls off. You look through the clothes I wear. You see who I am inside. 